Coming up on Mountain News First at Four, many folks in the mountains are struggling to find dependable child care. And students from one Louisville high school send toys to Appalachia. Plus, we're still watching showers creep toward the region as we head into the first half of your weekend. The very latest coming up as First at Four continues. Mountain News First at Four continues. Some Eastern Kentuckians tell us they are in a struggle every day to find dependable child care in the area. Only a few child care centers and homes are in the region, which has decreased even more since the flood. Becky Stacy, who's the executive director of the Appalachian Early Childhood Network in Hazard, says this issue puts a lot of financial stress on parents. Well, we're actually losing lots of people from the workforce because of lack of child care, especially working mothers. Stacy says she's hoping to find more people in the area willing to become child care workers at home. We'll have more on the daycare issues tonight at 530. Pike County's first responders are mourning the loss of a man recognized as one of Kentucky's oldest serving volunteer firefighters. Willie Runyon helped establish the Millard Fire Department in 1972 and dedicated his life to bringing safety and security to his neighbors every year since, serving in one capacity or another until the very end. Runyon died Wednesday at 90 years old, leaving behind a legacy that his community will never forget. The legacy he leaves behind is with his family, not only his blood family, but his fire department family. And that speaks volumes on day. Many people in the community have shared memories and stories of life-saving efforts only made possible because of the dedicated firefighter. We'll share more about Runyon's reach coming up tonight at 6. Gifts from the heart delivered to Appalachia. Students at one Louisville high school loaded up a truck full of toys to send to Mingo County, West Virginia this morning. Olivia Russell was there for the special holiday delivery. It's a trip that's been on pause because of the pandemic, but now three years later, students from Sacred Heart Academy are finally able to travel back to West Virginia and deliver some holiday goods. So we start with the baby, so it's zero to six months. It's been 27 years since Sister so, Janet uh, first started the Appalachian gift drive. This year, she's holding the memory of Sister Brendan close to her heart. The two saw the huge need in Mingo County, West Virginia back in 1995. And since then, they've worked with Sacred Heart to deliver Christmas to those in need, helping about 300 children a year. They call it a Santa shop, so it's a no-cost shopping experience for families in Mingo County. Uh, so they go through and they shop for their kids, and then at the end they get to pick up um, a meal basket for Christmas dinner. Students have been collecting gifts like books, art supplies, and stuffed animals, anything kids their age might want. Charlotte Robinson is looking forward to seeing the smiling faces in Appalachia. The sophomore has been to the area before, so she knows just how big the need is. It was really eye-opening to see how much they didn't have compared to us, and it was really kind of sad to see, but it was wonderful to be there for them and to kind of see more of the world and get that experience. This collection is for the entire campus. That's preschool, grade school, and high school. High school students are the only ones taking this trip, but they say they look forward to some of those younger students one day going to West Virginia. At Sacred Heart Academy, Olivia Russell, Wave News. Well, the search continues for an escaped inmate in Southern Kentucky. Casey County deputies say Chastity Burton is still on the run. She and Angela Mason left the jail early yesterday morning. They were in part of the jail that's required to have an unlocked door. Deputies found Mason yesterday afternoon. Now, the sheriff doesn't think Burton is armed or dangerous, but people should still be on high alert. The Christmas lights are twinkling again this year at Archer Park in Prestonsburg. Hopefully the rain will hold off so folks can have a dry evening if they want to drive through and see everything tonight. WYMT's Brandon Robinson joins us now live from Archer Park with more on the light display. Brandon. Hey, Steve, you were right. We are here in Floyd County. I teased it on social media a little while. I'm on assignment. Can you figure out where I'm at? Well, we are at Archer Park, and I'm joined by Prestonsburg Mayor Les Stapleton. Les, a lot going on here tonight. We have so much going on. We have almost 2 million lights. 
uh, about dark, you'll see cars start coming through. They actually line in the road. We have to have police and fire direct traffic. We have the carnival going on. We have Santa's coming over I've heard tonight. that. You know, Santa's a big deal, so they get the opportunity to see Santa. Characters. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of characters that are around, you know, so uh, you got to be ready for that, too. Uh, speaking just, of characters. That's a character, yeah. <laughs> Frosty, Frosty is joining us. So we're really excited to be able to offer this to everybody. It doesn't cost anything. We do take donations, and we reinvest right back in the lights. There you go. So if you just give people a message, what is the great thing about coming out tonight? Oh, the great thing, we got Santa. Right, Santa, of course. Oh, Santa's the big thing. Right. Uh, the weather's going to be right so they can get out and enjoy the carnival. It's not going to be too cold, <laughs> knock on wood. Yeah. Knock on wood. And this is a prelude for a parade tomorrow night downtown. That, that's what I was looking yes. for. Yes, we got, the, we the got a lot going that. on. Good. All right. We Good enjoy day. it for the kids. There you go. So come on out here. It's going on now. But, again, Santa will be here around 6, 630. I think it's what I heard earlier. And we'll be back to do some live weather at uh, 530 and 6. So we'll be taking over forever for a little bit. But speaking of Evan, let's see if that rain is close enough where it's going to cause us any problems here in Prestonburg. Evan? Well, at this point, Brandon, I don't think rain is moving in quite yet. I, I would imagine, though, it's a little warm for Frosty. Uh, with temperatures in the 50s and 60s, there's around the region you see temperatures are warm in the middle 50s. Not too far above normal, but still a little mild for early December. Plenty of overcast around. You see the current reading in Prestonsburg at 59. 58 Pikeville, 55 in Clintwood. Uh, some cooler numbers there in southwest Virginia. 50 in Wise and in Jonesville. You see a couple of showers trying to make their way further to the east. But a lot of this either not reaching the ground or is very, very low light, so I don't think any downpours are in the offering, but a few showers can be ruled out as we head through the nighttime hours. Shouldn't hurt things too bad there at Archer Park in Prestonsburg. The, the wide shot, you see that rain lining up along the Ohio River. That is slowly going to make its way in our direction as we head through the next 18 hours or so. So as we head through the evening hours, we'll continue to watch the progress of those showers, especially for folks who maybe have headed up to Kroger Field to see Corbin take on Boyle County in the Class 4A state title a little bit later on tonight. Details, though, on when rain moves in and out for the weekend in a few minutes. Steve? All right, Evan, thank you. Congress has stepped in and forced rail companies and workers to come to an agreement after avoiding a potential railroad strike. With the deadline approaching, President Biden signed into law a bill preventing rail workers from going on strike next week. The Senate overwhelmingly passed legislation yesterday afternoon. It forced the unions to agree to the contract negotiated in September between the railroads, labor unions, and the Biden administration. Working with business and labor to get this done and avoid this, what otherwise is a really good bill lacking only one thing. We're going to get them that one thing done before it's all over. The agreement includes raises by 24 percent through five years for workers, along with some bonus pay. A personal day was added as well. We'll have more on this coming up at 530. President Biden wants his party to change the order for nominating contests in the 2024 primary elections. The president suggests holding the early contests in this order. February 5th in South Carolina, February 12th in Nevada and New Hampshire, February 19th in Georgia, and February 26th in Michigan. The president says the early nominating contests need to reflect an electorate that is more diverse racially, e economically, and geographically. He also wants to get rid of caucuses. For decades, the first two nominating contests have been the Iowa caucuses and the New Hampshire primary. Coming up on First at Four, could working five days a week become a thing of the past? Plus, mild air and rain showers on the way in later tonight. The latest on when the rain starts, and for some it already has. Afterwards.